I'm Ann Neuberger, Deputy National Security Advisor uh, for Cyber and Emerging Technologies here at the White House. And I'm joined by Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel of the FCC, leading lights on the Hill on technology, Congresswoman Schakowsky, Congresswoman Matsui, Congressman Liu, and senior executives from leading technology manufacturers and retailers. And we're here to announce the Biden-Harris administration's launch of the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark program to make consumer devices, devices like smart TVs, home security systems, and thermostats more cyber secure. We are bringing more and more internet connected devices into our homes. And we know that Americans are concerned that these internet connected devices could be used to hack into homes, schools, and offices. So today's launch will help consumers identify and choose products that meet a U.S. government cybersecurity standards. And they'll give companies that meet that same security standards a way to differentiate their products and show that their products are more cyber secure. President Biden is keenly focused on improving the nation's cybersecurity and ensure Americans can be safe when they're online. He first requested we stand up this program two years ago in the President's Executive Order on Cybersecurity, and you'll hear the details today. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel for her remarks. Thank you, Anne, and good morning. What a treat to be here with so many cyber champions. Uh, as all of us know, there are so many new devices from smart televisions to thermostats to home security cameras to baby monitors and fitness trackers that are now connected to the internet. And these technologies offer huge benefits. They can make our lives easier and more efficient. They do things like help us check who is at the front door when we are not home, keep tabs on our health, and automatically adjust the thermostat so we can save on energy costs. But this increased interconnection brings more than just convenience. It brings increased security risk. After all, every device connected to the internet is a point of entry for the kind of cyber attacks that can take our personal data and compromise our safety. That's true for the biggest connections at the largest businesses, and it's also true for the smallest connections to the humblest devices in our homes. So I want to give you an example and just start by telling you one of my favorite stories. It is a story about cybercrime that was told by the author Misha Glenn, and it involves a bank, which like most institutions in the modern economy was keenly aware of the vulnerabilities of digital age activity. In fact, they spared no expense when it came to cybersecurity. They carefully assessed the risks of their operation and they spent liberally to ensure the safe and secure transfer of funds. And in the process, they just about convinced themselves that they were invincible. But of course, pride often comes just before the fall because despite their best efforts, the hacker was able to make their way into their network. And it wasn't in the bank systems for transactions, accounts, or deposits. It was in a vending machine at headquarters that was filled with chocolate bars. You see, the vending machine had its own IP address, but the bank neglected to put it on the system for automated software patching updates. After all, when you plan for your security updates, the machine where you drop your coins late at night when you need a little sugar boost to keep working is not the place you first think to go. But that was all it took for this bank to be penetrated, a single vending machine loaded with chocolate bars. Now, I love this story because it's a reminder of how much is actually now connected in our lives. That's true in businesses like banks, but it's also true for most of us at home too. You know, all those new home security cameras, those connected thermostats and those fitness trackers, they add up. Already globally, we have about 17 billion smart devices on the marketplace and they're growing. By the end of the decade, we expect to have 25 billion, and along the way, cyber incidents associated with them are growing too. So that can make us wary of bringing these smart devices, these Internet of Things devices into our lives, and then we'll miss out on the convenience, opportunities, and efficiencies that they can afford. The truth is it doesn't have to be this way because we can do more to make the Internet of Things and these smart devices secure and do more to help consumers make good choices about what they bring into their homes and businesses. 
In fact, there are a lot of people who are here today who have been working on that for a long time. And for many years, my colleagues at NIST have been developing security criteria for smart devices. And last year, I had the opportunity to join Anne and a whole bunch of others who are here today to talk a little bit about the security of the Internet of Things and what we could do to label smart devices so consumers feel more secure about the products they purchase and bring into their homes. So I left that conversation energized, and I want to tell you now what we're going to do about it at the Federal Communications Commission. Today, I put before my colleagues a proposal to put in place the first ever voluntary cybersecurity labeling program for connected smart devices. We're calling it the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark. And just like the Energy Star logo helps consumers know what devices are energy efficient, the Cyber Trust Mark will help consumers make more informed purchasing and more informed decisions about what kind of devices they bring into their homes and businesses. So when you need a baby monitor or a new home appliance, you'll be able to look for the Cyber Trust Mark and you'll be able to shop with greater confidence. What's more, because we know devices and services are not static, we're proposing that along with the mark, we'll have a QR code that provides up-to-date information on the device. So this proposal builds on the good work that's already been done by government and industry because we're going to rely on those NIST recommended criteria to set the Cyber Trust Mark program up. That means we're going to use criteria device manufacturers already know, and when they choose to meet the related standards, they're going to be able to showcase privacy and security in the marketplace by displaying this mark. And over time, we hope more companies will want to display it, and even better, more consumers will demand it. All right, so next steps. If adopted by my colleagues at the agency, and I'm pretty optimistic we're going to be able to do that in short order, we're going to seek public comment on this proposal. We'll ask about the scope of eligible devices, the mechanics of managing this program, and consumer education, among other issues. So this isn't a small task, but I think it's worth it because the future of these smart devices is so big. But even bigger is the opportunity for us to ensure that every consumer, every business, and even every bank with a vending machine can make smart choices about the connected devices they use. So let's get to it. Thank you very much, Chairwoman. So as Chairwoman Rosenworcel mentioned, the White House first launched a summit on the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark program in October to bring in companies and academia to hear perspectives on how this program could be most effective in connecting a voluntary program that could connect consumers who are eager to know that the smart TVs, smart thermostats they're bringing into their homes are more cyber secure and less vulnerable to cyber attacks. And to the companies who seek to develop more cyber secure products, secure by design, but know that in some cases that may be more costly and want to know that there's a market for it. So the goal of the Cyber Trust Mark is to serve as that connection and stand with it with the integrity of the U.S. government standard created by the National Institute for Standards, who you'll hear from a bit more later. Since we began discussions on the program, we've been greatly encouraged by the enthusiasm from the private sector. Companies who joined and said, let's talk about it. We're eager to do this. We're eager to be a part of it. And you'll hear from a number of companies here today. So with that, I'd like to welcome each corporate executive who joins us today and ask them to make remarks regarding how they will plan to be participating in the program. So with that, we'll start with Mr. Yoon, CEO of LG Electronics, who I believe is joining us Thank from you. South Korea. Thank you. I'm, I'm from LG Electronics USA. Thank you so much for having us today. As a leader in smart home technologies and platforms, smart appliance, and connected consumer electronics product, LG Electronics is honored to be here today for the official launch of IoT cybersecurity labeling program. LG strongly supports the groundbreaking new US cyber trust mark program which aligns perfectly with the LG brand promise, innovation for a better life. Through this voluntary program, manufacturers and consumers will benefit from increased transparency, consumer awareness, and informed decision making. By incorporating a digital label with a QR code, we'll be able to deliver comprehensive 
and up-to-date cybersecurity information to customers, foster interactive engagement, gather valuable analytics, and promote sustainability. In this public-private partnership, we believe government will play a crucial role in fostering IoT cybersecurity and promoting its benefit by educating American consumers. Together, we can help raise awareness and empower consumers to make it informed decisions when purchasing connected devices. As this program launches here, we urge U.S. government to encourage with other nations, regulatory bodies, and industry stakeholders to promote labor's global recognition and adoption. By fostering international collaboration and consensus, the United States can drive the adoption of common security standard and ensure a more secure and interoperable IoT environment around the world. Today's historic announcement built on our own cybersecurity effort and our extensive work with the Consumer Technology Association and Connectivity Standard Alliance, as well as UL Solutions and other testing and certification bodies. We look forward to collaborating with government and industry stakeholders to make this program a success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. I'd like to now turn it over to Mr. Samsung. On behalf of Samsung's 20,000 US and 270,000 global employees, thank you for your leadership on this critical topic. Samsung is the world's leading consumer electronics and semiconductor company. Our commitment to the US began more than 40 years ago. We manufacture smart washing machines, such as the one that you can see later at the showcase, and semiconductors in the United States. With 72% of US homes having one or more Samsung connected products, the US is one of Samsung's largest and most important consumer markets. Samsung prioritizes cybersecurity for both our own connected products and the open multi-brand home IoT ecosystem that we lead known as SmartThings. To join our SmartThings platform, all devices must pass functional testing for seamless interoperability and security testing for secure connections. Samsung launched our uh, security guidelines in the works with SmartThings program in 2018. This actually predated existing global IoT security standards and was one of the first set of industry-driven ecosystem security standards. Since then, the SmartThings ecosystem has grown to encompass devices from more than hundreds of brands, and its security takes into account the latest global standards, including NIST's IoT cybersecurity baseline. Consistent with our market leadership in delivering innovative and secure connected consumer devices, Samsung commits to a voluntary cyber labeling program in the US that is harmonized with global approaches and features incentives for adoption. We also commit to deeply engaging with our government and industry partners to develop an IoT cyber labeling program that increases security transparency and protections for consumers. Once the program is sufficiently mature, we plan to obtain the label for many of our connected consumer products in the US market. We also plan to play a leading role in the consumer education campaign, which is essential to the label's success. At Samsung and through SmartThings, we believe that innovative consumer connected devices enable us to thrive together, make our lives more sustainable, more entertaining, healthier, and safer. Thank you once again for your leadership. Through our collective partnership, we're confident that this program will succeed. Thank you very much. We'll turn it over to Mr. Wilder of Logitech. Thank you for having us here today. At Logitech, we believe in the power and opportunity of the connected world. We are world leaders in designing, manufacturing, and marketing products that help connect people to digital and cloud experiences. We have an intimate connection to our customers. We're in their hands, we're on their desks, and we're in their homes. 
and we take that seriously. So we develop all of our products using a secure development practices, following industry best practices in design, development, testing, manufacturing, and maintenance. But that's not enough. At Logitech, we believe consumers need easy access to information to make informed purchasing decisions to protect themselves and their families. Trust, transparency, and accountability are required to make that happen. Much like we are empowering our customers to make environmentally sustainable choices by being the first consumer electronics company to provide carbon clarity labels on all of our products, we also want to further support them to make safe choices in the, in the devices that they put into their homes and offices. So we commit to adding the US Cyber Trust Mark to our products. This is why Logitech is proud to be involved with the Product Security Working Group in the Connectivity Standards Alliance to help develop a best-in-class standard for IoT security. Bolstered by leadership and action from this White House, we will soon be able to provide clarity and peace of mind to every consumer that the devices they use to interact with the digital world are protected from cyber threats. So I want to thank the Connectivity Standards Alliance for spearheading this important work, and the President and Cabinet and our representatives for making this a national priority and an example for the world to fall. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll turn it over to Mr. Kleidermacher of Google. Thank you. My name is Dave Kleidermacher, and I serve as Google's Vice President responsible for security and privacy engineering for Android, Google Play, and the Made by Google products, which include Nest, Fitbit, and Pixel devices and services. The path towards these digital security labels uh, has been a personal journey for over two decades, and I'm grateful to the White House for inviting us here today and to the numerous federal agencies, members of Congress, and other cyber champions uh, that have recognized uh, connected product device security as a critical issue for the American people and the world. Openness and transparency are built deeply into Google's DNA, and for years, we've voluntarily had our kind of connected devices validated by security labs against requirements compatible with national and international standards. We publish not only audit results, but also security update lifetime commitments and vulnerability disclosure information generated through the world's most prolific vulnerability disclosure programs in partnership with the global security research community. We've also promoted adherence to these best practices in our third-party developer platforms. The billions of devices and apps connected to those platforms, again, including Android, Google Play, Fitbit, and Nest, represent a significant portion of the Internet of Things. We've also been actively working with the Connectivity Standards Alliance to stand up a certification program that harmonizes international standards to ensure they remain effective for consumers as well as manufacturers of all sizes. Today, we're proud to commit to continue certifying Google's products against industry standards in support of the cyber trust mark. And we will continue to lead the development of transparency standards because at Google, we firmly believe that similar to food ingredients labels, consumers deserve to understand the security ingredients of their products that connect to the internet. While certification against baseline standards does not mean that a product is free of vulnerabilities, the transparency is the tide that raises all boats because it enables consumers to compare the security of products and make healthier choices, which in turn will drive manufacturers to improve these ingredients, making the Internet of Things and all of us safer. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we can all reflect on the healthier choices, <laughs> whether it comes to diets or whether it comes to tech we bring into our homes and offices. So with that, I want to turn it over to Mr. Wei of Amazon. Hello, and thank you for inviting Amazon to be here today at this historic announcement. My name is Bill Way, and I'm the company's Associate General Counsel for Privacy. At Amazon, we work backwards from our customers in everything we do, and we work hard every day to earn their trust. We help our customers compare products and shop with confidence on Amazon.com by displaying detailed privacy and security information on product detail pages. We have a very high bar for protecting our customers. That's why our own devices and services are built with multiple layers of security and why we work every day to protect our customers and keep their information safe and secure. Amazon supports the U.S. government's objective of developing a comprehensive U.S. Cyber Trust Mark labeling program that complements and aligns with global security requirements and regulations. We think our customers will appreciate seeing the label not only on packaging when their products arrive on their doorstep, but also when shopping online. 
We look forward to partnering with our industry counterparts and the government, including the FCC, on this effort. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I know many of us are particularly grateful that we have Mr. Krause for Yale and August locks here. As we think about home safety, connected locks is certainly one that's the top of everyone's list. So, Mr. Krause. Thank you and good morning. Um, I'm Kevin Krause. I'm the VP of Technology Alliances for Yale and August Lock, and we're delighted to be here today. Yale and August are pleased to participate in this IoT labeling program and are committed to ensuring our consumer products meet the IoT security labeling standard as the program develops. As the leading smart home security brands that create residential products and services that manage access to the home, the security and privacy of our customers has and will always be our top priority. We are excited for the launch of the program as it shares our commitment to make IoT devices safe, secure, and convenient for consumers. Thank you to the committee for allowing Yale and August to take part in this admirable initiative. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. So improving the nation's cybersecurity and ensuring Americans can feel safer when they bring connected devices into their homes, schools, and offices has a great deal of support on the Hill. And the President greatly appreciates having leading lights on technology issues on the Hill here with us to talk about their support for the program. So with that, I'd like to introduce Congresswoman Schakowsky of Illinois. Well, thank you so much. It's really such an honor to be um, at the launch of this very important consumer protection activity. Um, I am here um, because I have, for most of my life, been an activist on consumer protection. And this is a major step forward. So thank you so, so very much. Um, I want to tell you that consumers right now online and when they um, get these uh, new products in their home that are connected to the internet, do not feel confident right now. Unfortunately, we have not passed a comprehensive online consumer protection uh, bill in, in this country. I hope that, uh, that we will soon. But um, I think that consumers right now feel that there is no, no such thing as privacy, that they want, yes, they do, they want the technologies that you have produced. They want to be able um, to have all of the products that make life better and, and in, 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 their, uh, in their lives, but they don't feel confident that this is not going to result in information that they don't want shared to be shared and to be abused. And so I think this um, launching of this effort to now allow consumers to have the information that they are going to, to, to need, that they're going to have the protection that they desire is so incredibly important. And I just want to say thank you to the um, industry that's involved and to President Biden and this administration for understanding the anxiety that so many consumers feel when they buy these products that they want, the benefits that they want to get from, from them, um, and yet are, consumed, are concerned that their safety and their privacy will be violated. It's a big step. I'm proud to be here as part of the launch. Thank you very, very much. We'd like to now turn to Representative Matsu Doris Matsui of California. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone, and I want to thank the deputy for the invitation and for the critical work advancing the cybersecurity labeling initiative. You know, we all know about Energy Star to the FCC's broadband labels. This concept has effectively communicated vital information to consumers about the products they use every day. IoT, or the Internet of Things, represents a new opportunity to improve people's health, reduce waste, and make our lives easier. While these benefits will be felt by all Americans, we really cannot ignore the unique cyber threat really posed by the widespread distribution of these IoT devices. Each IoT device offers a back door, or even a front door, for cyber criminals to exploit a network. Whether it's a baby monitor, or a smart light bulb, or 
anything else that we use every day, our cyber defenses are only as strong as the weakest link in the chain. But managing the cyber threat can't just fall to individual consumers. We know how tough that is. It's unfair and ultimately ineffective. It just doesn't work. That's why this effort is so critical to our cyber future. It ensures that the most capable actors in our digital ecosystem are helping manage the cyber risk. These new labels will not only give consumers better information about the products they're using in their homes, they'll also create a clear incentives for the manufacturers to produce more secure devices. And I'm really glad to see such a strong showing here in both industry and government. It shows we are serious, that we have the collective buy-in we need for this initiative. I'm really glad to work with all of you to advance this important program. It's wonderful to be here at the launch. And I thank everybody here in a sea the White House really to help to create a more secure cyber future for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congresswoman Matsui. And finally, we'll turn it over to Representative Liu of California. Thank you. Uh, as a recovering computer science major, I am thrilled to be here. And I want to thank the Biden-Harris administration for the focus on cybersecurity and the White House for hosting this event. Specifically, I want to thank Deputy National Security Advisor Neuberger, FCC Chairwoman Rosenworcel, NIST Director Locasio, Department of Energy Director Kumar, CISA Director Easterly, and NCD Acting Director Walden for their leadership on this cybersecurity labeling initiative. I also want to thank my tremendous colleagues, Doris Matsu and John Schakowsky, for their leadership on consumer protection issues. I thought I'd start out with an analogy. Uh, so when a shopper goes to Target and they buy a lamp and they bring their lamp home, they don't expect it to catch on fire. And the reason is because there's a little certification on that box uh, by Underwriters Laboratory. And Target has learned over time that if they sell products that are certified by uh, a certification agency, consumers tend not to be mad at them because their products don't catch on fire. And the manufacturers know that over time, if they get and meet this standard, then Target is more likely to buy the product for them. So in 2017, Senator Mark and I introduced the Cyber Shield Act to do a voluntary cybersecurity labeling initiative for products similar to uh, what Underwriters Laboratory would do, for example. And we are so pleased that the White House is now going forward uh, with the Cyber Trust Mark Voluntary Cybersecurity Labeling Initiative. And what we'll see is at the beginning, it will be really important to consumers who will look at this mark and then make a decision as to what product they want to buy. But over time, it's our hope that no one notices this mark anymore because manufacturers will know, hey, if we meet these voluntary standards, we're going to be able to sell our product. Retailers know that they're going to be able to sell more of these products if these products meet this standard. And it's our hope that eventually we're going to get all products up to their cybersecurity standards that they need to meet. And so, so thrilled to be here and thank you again for everyone participating in this important initiative. Thank you so much, Congressman Liu. And we'll hear a bit more from Underwriter Labs a bit later in the program. So thank you for highlighting their work. As I mentioned earlier, we're fortunate that keeping the nation safe in cyberspace is an area that really has a great deal of bipartisan support on the Hill. And the co-leaders of the Cyberspace Solarium Commission, Senator King and Congressman Gallagher, issued a letter of joint support. Senator King felt so strongly couldn't be with us today that he recorded a video, so we'll hear from him now in just a moment. I want to thank everyone that's been involved in bringing us to this day. Cyber labeling, labeling of consumer products for cybersecurity is one of the major initiatives of the Solarium Commission. It's one of the major initiatives that I've been interested in and working on for the last two or three years. And I want to thank uh, uh, Commissioner Rosenworcel and Newberger and all those who've been involved in making this a reality. I think this is a big deal. Uh, of course, protection in cyberspace is a multi-layered process. It involves government, it involves big private enterprises, but it also involves people. 
I often like to say that cyber security starts at the desktop. It also starts at the router or at the, at the, at the smart TV or all the other myriad of devices, connected devices that we have in our homes. So what you're doing today is announcing the initiative that's been a long time in the coming and a long time in the, in the work and the preparation. And I just want to tell you how appreciative I am of all the work that's gone in at the FCC, at the National Security Council, in the private sector, and uh, the work that's gone into making this a reality. Congratulations. This is going to really make a difference, and I think it's going to help protect our country. Thank you for what you've done. Congratulations and let's see it roll out. So, while the video played, we brought in some new participants to the stage to talk more about how the cybersecurity part of this program works. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Lori Lacasio, Director of the Department of Commerce National Institute for Standards, whose agency has done key work defining the initial cybersecurity standard, underpinning the first round of devices under the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark program. Well, thank you so much, Anne, for your leadership and for convening today's launch of the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark program. Very exciting day. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here and excited to be working with my colleagues, of course, um, Chairwoman Rosenworcel from FCC, uh, and really across the interagency and with our industry collaborators. Um, trust is both the anchor for our work and the way we approach it. NIST seeks to build trust in technology by advancing cybersecurity and privacy standards, guidelines, techniques, and measurements which are essential for U.S. national security, for economic security, and for technological leadership. NIST builds trust in these resources in open, transparent, inclusive, and collaborative processes across all stakeholders. Using this process, we have developed guidelines and guidances for both users and manufacturers of IoT products in collaboration with partners from the private sector, from academia, and from government. Because of the way we do our work, industry trusts NIST product processes and results, and industry voluntarily builds on our work to improve the cybersecurity and privacy of available products, and we're very happy about that. We're pleased to see collaborative efforts building on NIST's work in IoT cybersecurity to support this exciting new program. Cybersecurity is a key enabler of other areas of concern for our citizens and businesses, such as privacy and safety. While cybersecurity is a shared responsibility, we recognize that securable products are foundational for a secure ecosystem. Manufacturers cannot anticipate every customer environment and every use case that drives the understanding of risk. However, broad outlines of anticipated customers and user, user cases, use cases are possible. And for these situations, there are some common cybersecurity capabilities that are needed to provide a more securable product to the customer. And this understanding led NIST to develop the core baseline and recommended set of activities that were described earlier to identify needed cybersecurity capabilities during product development. And this base baseline provides a broadly applicable starting point, and it allows the expansion as needed to accommodate new risks, new products, and cybersecurity capabilities as they arrive. At NIST, our expertise is not limited to the development of standards and guidance. We also are experts in conformity assessment, which is how organizations can demonstrate how they meet various standards. And we develop guidance on conformity assessments for the federal government. And this guidance is grounded in three core tenets. First, engage stakeholders at every phase of program development and operation. Second, maximize transparency in design, development, and operation of the program. And third, reduce regulatory burden and stakeholder cost by leveraging existing efforts wherever possible, including programs and systems and competencies. And this includes voluntary consensus standards wherever possible. Further, through a series of efforts 
directed through Executive Order 14028, we've conducted research into key elements of successful labeling programs for consumer IoT devices, including minimum re requirements and desirable attributes of labeling programs that will help providers and customers to choose the best solutions for their products and their environments. NIST unique non-regulatory science and technology role positions us well to work across the diverse IoT security stakeholders to improve trust in technology and contribute to a safer and more secure world. And this fully supports the goal of a public-private sector engagement to pr provide consumers with usable information regarding the security capabilities of consumer IoT products. And we believe this cybersecurity labeling program can also lead to an increased number of consumer products that provide cybersecurity functionality and improve the ability of manufacturers to demonstrate that cybersecurity functionality. So I'm excited to work along all, uh, alongside all of you. I'm excited to be here and to receive input on how we can learn from your efforts and leverage and build upon existing cybersecurity criteria to improve the security of connected technology. So thank you again. Thank you so much, Lori. In the design of this program, very much over the last year, we've greatly appreciated the support of the Consumer Technology Association, representing the $500 billion US consumer tech um, industry, as well as of the Connectivity Standards Alliance. And we'll hear from both in just a moment. So with that, I'd like to turn it to Mr. Bergman of the Consumer Technology Association. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Michael Bergman, representing the Consumer Technology Association, the nation's largest tech trade association. It's an honor to be here today. CTA owns and produces CES, the most powerful tech event in the world, a proving ground for breakthrough technologies and global innovators who make the connected devices we find throughout our homes and in our lives. Connected devices from smart TVs to video doorbells have revolutionized how we live, work, and play. However, as the Internet of Things has made our lives easier, it's created new opportunities for bad actors to exploit consumers' devices. The Consumer Technology Association has worked with NIST and others for more than five years to develop a voluntary national cybersecurity labeling program. We meet regularly with manufacturers, alliances, universities, consumer advocates, and CTA's own ANSI accredited standards body to develop the foundational requirements for this program. This work created the foundation for the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark to help consumers identify secure products a standardized mark and a QR code, what information consumers will see online, how to incorporate existing programs like third-party certification and self-attestation, and the technical requirements for a public registry of secure consumer products. CTA has a proven track record seeding and leading public-private collaborations as evidenced by our recent work with industry and the FDA to bring over-the-counter hearing aids to tens of millions of Americans. Research shows consumers want more information on the safety and security of their products. We agree. Our manufacturer and retail members are excited about the voluntary label program and are ready to sell certification-ready products once the FCC adopts final rules. Many are with us today to display their products and show their commitment to secure devices. As the FCC works to make the CyberTrust Mark program happen, CTA, as the voice of the tech industry, will show that government and industry can work together to strengthen incentives for, for participation and make sure that more manufacturers and retailers embrace this critical program. Through regulatory incentives like an earned safe harbor, preemption of state laws, and international alignment, government can speed up the pace of adoption. The resulting cyber trust mark can provide the consistency, predictability, and transparency that leads to greater protection for consumers, businesses, and infrastructure. By continuing to collaborate with industry, the United States can de demonstrate critical leadership in cybersecurity and serve as a model for other nations. We applaud President Biden and the administration for their work to protect consumers. The National Security Council, the FCC, NIST, and Congress have taken a big step forward by ensuring 
that consumers have the information that they need to make informed decisions about the security of the connected products they buy. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now turn it over to Tobin Richardson of the Connectivity Standards Alliance, a global standards organization. Thank you so much. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, I have some remarks, but I also just want to start by saying that these kinds of things don't happen uh, without incredible leadership. Um, and it usually happens with us and focus on interoperability, simplicity, and security. Um, and in the three of you, we have uh, three great leaders who have made this a priority to protect consumers, but also create a market uh, that's useful for manufacturers. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that, and our members are. Uh, the CSA, the Connectivity Standards Alliance, is an organization of 600 uh, companies from around the world with that singular focus on interoperability, delivering uh, simple solutions for consumers and connected devices. Uh, and we have the benefit of 20 years' experience in delivering that, both through Zigbee and Smart Energy, uh, but in other areas as well. Um, our focus, of course, is on interoperability, delivering consumer value, and enabling greater and easier, easier market growth for our members, and especially for IoT security, which is the reason that we're here today. U.S. actions to establish requirements through NIST and via the labeling program are part of a larger global movement. Consumers worldwide not only need access to the value that the IoT can bring, but they also need to trust that the products that they use are safe and secure. Regulators and policymakers all over the world are looking to address these needs that build that trust, and we are here to contribute as an organization and a global community. This is not the first time we've needed to align uh, and, and find a place where industry and governments and academia can work in a way that crosses global boundaries. For more than 20 years, we've been on the front lines working with the U.S. and other governments in areas like smart energy, smart grid, uh, remote controls, and several other areas that touch consumers and critical infrastructure. And most recently, we've led the way with our members with secure IoT interoperability with Matter, an IP-based protocol that delivers uh, really great uh, uh, device interoperability, and that's just getting started by many of the companies here today. That lets devices interoperate and work with platforms regardless of brand, where every device is validated before joining the network and every message is encrypted. That's a great start, and that uh, goes a long ways toward what we're trying to achieve here. The new product security working group uh, within our organization dovetails nicely here. Over the last year, it's been tackling this next challenge of security and trust. Considering the disparate requirements across more than 47 countries who are looking at cybersecurity for the IoT to establish a common baseline standard based on NIST and other leading criteria that can, of course, be validated through one-stop shop certification, testing like ours, can be recognized by programs like the U.S. Uh, cybersecurity Labeling Program and others, and can enable faster and easier adoption of that security baseline by manufacturers around the world so that all consumers benefit. So we're excited uh, to be working here closely with many of the companies here today and also with partners uh, like the Consumer Technology Association. We're committed to delivering both the harmonized specification and certification program that meets the requirements for the U.S. national label, allowing industry through global standards to deliver a more secure and a more connected world. And we're posting a blog later today, of course, with a list of members, uh, well over 30, who are committed to provide components to certify and support our standardization efforts. Uh, and with that, I want to thank uh, the Deputy National Security Advisor, Chairwoman Rosenworcel, and Director Lacasio for all the great work and the leadership. We look forward to the next steps here and working closely with you. Thank you so much. These are the kinds of partnerships that really drive progress forward, and we greatly appreciate that partnership over the past and looking forward to the future. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Morio of Underwriters Labs. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Shante Morio, and I am representing UL Solutions. Since its inception in 1894, UL Solutions has served a mission of working for a safer world. Grounded in science and collaboration, UL Solutions' work empowers trust in pioneering technology. From the advent of electricity to the enablement of 5G and new mobility. It's an honor to be here today. And we at UL Solutions appreciate the opportunity to say a few words on this important topic. As consumers increasingly rely on connected Internet of Things devices, from locks and baby monitors to connected appliances, they must be able to trust that these devices are designed, built, and managed over their lifetime with security and privacy in mind. UL Solutions is a recognized le leader in security training, advisory, testing, auditing, and certification services within cybersecurity regulated markets. We provide an expanding range of solutions for safeguarding the Internet of Things, 
supporting compliance to a variety of standards and frameworks, including NIST, EN 303 645, IEC 62443, and the Red Directive, amongst others. These offerings address the imperative aspects of secure product development and cybersecurity in smart ecosystems and effective cybersecurity supply chain risk management. Third party assessment and verification is crucial for device cybersecurity. Product testing and certification by independent third parties, along with the attachment of a visible, well known certification mark, provides confidence to consumers that devices comply with industry and government specifications and requirements. The ability of device manufacturers to credibly demonstrate the performance, safety, and security of their systems will be critical to establishing trustworthiness and should serve two purposes. One, to help manufacturers and develop, developers improve the security posture of their products by leveraging proven security best practices and two, to evaluate the security posture of IoT solutions to make security more transparent to end users. As the administration continues to evolve this new labeling program, UL Solutions is eager to share our valuable expertise, including our experience as a third party testing and certification body in similar government led product labeling efforts around consumer facing issues such as the EPA's Energy Star Program for Energy Efficiency, OSHA's Nationally Recognized Testing Laboratory Program for Electrical Safety, and the EPA's Environmentally Preferable Purchasing Program Pilot for Sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll turn it over to Mr. Puria Karupan, please, of Keysight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us here today. Good morning. I'm Ram Periyakrup, and I'm the Vice President and General Manager of the Networks Application and Security Business at Keysight. Unlike many others on stage today, we actually don't make consumer electronics. Instead, we're a technology company that was originally founded in 1939 as Hewlett Packard, and we build products that help our customers, you know, including many of the manufacturers you're hearing from today, accelerate innovation to connect and secure the world. We build the tools that manufacturers use to test everything from autonomous vehicles to battery drain and pacemakers, to 5G cell phones, securing their cloud applications. One way we help our customers in the build, in, in, is by building automated compliance testing for different security standards. For example, those used in 5G and connected cars. Consumers are rapidly embracing IoT devices for use throughout their day. This poses a serious risk for privacy, financial and health data. This is bad for everyone, consumers and manufacturers alike. But we've never had any sort of standard for securing IoT devices or letting buyers know, you know how secure these devices are. Keysight welcomes this initiative to imp improve consumer cybersecurity. We're here today because we're excited to announce our commitment to building a point and click turnkey certification solution, leveraging on our 20 years of security test expertise Consumer IoT manufacturers will be able to quickly spot and fix security gaps in their products and ultimately validate their security to achieve the new IoT label. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. We'll turn it over to Ms. Burkhardt of IOXT. Yes, thank you for having me. Uh, so my name is Grace Burkhardt. I am the Director of Operations at IOXT Alliance, the global standard of IoT security, and the first and most established IoT security platform in the world. Um, the IOXT Alliance is a group of manufacturers, OEMs, industry alliances, labs, and government organizations dedicated to harmonizing best security practices and establishing testable standards. Um, our goal is to bring security, upgradability, and transparency to the market and directly into the hands of the consumers. We are a global organization committed to one noble mission, creating a safer connected world through the advancement of IoT security. Today, I am honored to share with you our unwavering support for the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark program and our deep commitment to ensuring the safety and security of IoT devices. As the Internet of Things becomes an inseparable part of our daily lives, we are witnessing a remarkable transformation in the way that we interact with technology. From smart homes to medical devices and industrial equipment, IoT is shaping the future. However, this transformative power comes with its own set of challenges. 
particularly in ensuring the security and protection of these interconnected devices. That's where the IOXT Alliance steps in. We have been diligently collaborating with the National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, in shaping NIST IR8425, or the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark Program. Our contributions have been driven by the shared vision of building a safer IoT ecosystem for all. I am proud to announce that due to our unwavering dedication and alignment of goals, the IOXT Alliance expects to be one of the first scheme owners to license the Cyber Trust Mark to our members and stakeholders. This recognition reinforces our position as the global standard for IoT security and demonstrates the trust placed in our certification program. Our certification program sets a baseline level of security and we take immense pride in ensuring that connected devices meet industry recognized security standards. As we work in harmony with other prestigious organizations such as the Consumer Technology Association, the FCC, uh, and more, we are committed to providing consumers with greater transparency and confidence when making IoT device purchases. But our journey doesn't stop here. We believe in a future where IoT is synonymous with trust where every connected device offers a secure experience. Our relentless pursuit of this vision drives us forward each day, and we are fully invested in empowering manufacturers and consumers alike. In conclusion, as we embrace the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark and forge ahead with our mission, let us all unite in creating a safer connected world. Together with the collective efforts of industry leaders, stakeholders, and government agencies, we can build a future where IoT thrives on the bedrock of security, privacy, and trust. Thank you. Thank you very much for those remarks. So in order to manufacture a safer and more secure product, what's inside really matters, including circuit boards and chips. So I'm pleased we have a few companies here that are focused on making secure components. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mr. Rostek of Infineon. Thank you very much. I'm Thomas Rostek, president of the Connected Secure Systems Division at Infineon Technologies, and I'm honored to be here. Thanks. We design, develop, and manufacture a broad range of semiconductor and system solutions for smart mobility, energy efficiency, and for smart, uh, secure connectivity. Security is part of Infineon's DNA for more than 30 years. And also, actually, personally for me, I'm 20 years in security, and that's why I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> because sometimes it's not so easy to sell security. That's why this event is really, really close to my heart, and I came all the way from Germany for today. So, thank you. Um, we do make chips that secure credit cards and uh, contactless payments. We are a trusted partner to the U.S. government as we deliver uh, security technology into the U.S. passport. And additionally, we obviously make chips for securing computers, for securing connected vehicles, and obviously uh, devices for IoT, for the Internet of Things. Additionally to this, we are also engaged worldwide in standardization bodies on the topic of security, like the CSA, um, which actually did a great job also in kind of um, facilitating this here. Security is a central part of IoT. Actually, it's a precondition, and without security, IoT will not work long time. The convergence of real and the digital world demands for secure uh, data storage, data transfer, and for secured digital identities. Today, there are more than 3 billion IoT devices in the US, more than 17 billion globally, and the number is supposed to double until the end of the decade, which makes the today's announce, uh, announcement so timely. And every of those <laughs> devices need to be secure, like the candy <laughs> machine in the bank. Consumers um, seek quality and security when buying the products. The creation of this voluntary US cyber trust mark will enable the people to compare security of the products they buy, and it will allow the consumers to speak with their wallets. Empowering American consumers to choose better security in their IoT devices will be a game changer, creating a drive for better security as the Energy Star has, be, has created a drive for better efficiency. So it's a matter of trust to create. As semiconductors are the backbone, the starting point for security in a device, that's why we are 
here today to also commit um, to get our um, IoT development boards, I have one with me here, uh, certified under this US national label program. Um, together with the already existing certifications that we have on many of our chips, this will help our customers to create IoT devices that are secure and are also being able to be certified under the US national label scheme. So we congratulate the Biden-Harris administration for making this program a reality. And thanks again for having me. Thank you, danke schön, for joining us all the way from Sehr Germany. Gerne. <laughs> we greatly appreciate that. So now we'll turn it to Mr. Krevestin of Coro. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to join you today as we take this important step in securing the internet of things ecosystem and enhancing consumer confidence in the IoT. My name is Eric Crest, and I'm president of the Connectivity and Sensors business at Corvo. Uh, we're a North Carolina-based semiconductor manufacturer focused on developing communication, power, and sensing solution for multiple markets, such as mobile, automotive, defense, and of course, the IoT. As members of the Connectivity Standards Alliance, the Car Connectivity Consortium, and the FIRA Consortium, Corvo understands the high value that consumers place in device standardization and security. We enable highly reliable wireless connectivity between smartphones and Wi-Fi and networks, and our, and our solutions are in many of today's IoT devices. These devices produce data typically from sensors, process the data, and transmit it to other IoT devices, primarily using system-on-chip technology from companies like Corvo. Our chips include protected unique identifiers together with security vaults and processors to guarantee the integrity and authenticity of information. It's of utmost importance that the industry aligns on the proper and common practices to ensure IoT devices and ensure they do not become a weakness in the security chain. We invest heavily to ensure compliance of our solutions with standards and interoperability access across our portfolio as we see security as a fundamental driver to the uptake of IoT. We know the promise of the IoT, smart home and connected car can never be fully realized unless consumers are confident their networks, devices, and personal information are truly secure. We're proud to be here with many of our customers and industry partners and the support of the labeling initiative. The adoption of global standards and the resulting consumer confidence has been key to the growth and rapid adoption of many of today's key wireless systems. We see the same opportunity for the IoT and the labeling initiative as a key driver of consumer confidence. We look forward to supporting our customers in this important industry initiative and are proud of the role Corvo plays in keeping the IT securely connected. Thank you very much. And finally, we'll turn it over to Mr. Tibbetts of Qualcomm. Thank you so much, and thank you. Um, I'd like to thank this distinguished panel for your leadership and your initiative. Um, it's really critical here. Uh, my name is Nate Tibbetts. I'm with Qualcomm. Qualcomm is a leading wireless technology innovator and the driving force behind 5G, which is accelerating digital transformation across industries and enabling novel connected solutions. We invent breakthrough technologies that connect devices and support countless services that consumers use and love to more than 13,000 global ecosystem members and customers. Our IoT chipsets enable devices that deliver safer manufacturing systems for workers, smarter logistics tracking and safety for drivers, more sustainable city um, infrastructure for the citizens, and seamless and secure virtual appointments for physicians and their patients. We help put the connected digital edge in the hands of the people. We implement advanced security tools in our chipsets to support reliable and secure IoT applications. Today, the White House's Voluntary Cyber Trust Label Program supports American industry's expanded reliance on IoT and secure solutions, and Qualcomm welcomes today's announcement. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. So we'll do our final transition to talk about educating the consumer, the shopper who's shopping online or in stores to know to as a prior speaker said, make healthy choices. So as we do that, we'll turn to a video by Carnegie Mellon University on their nutrition facts style label for consumer connected devices and how that might work. Let's say you're shopping for a smart thermostat for your connected home. You would love to save energy and control your thermostat remotely, but you have heard that IoT products can be hacked over the internet 
and you're concerned about what data they collect in your home. You go to your favorite electronics store and walk down the aisle where they sell Internet of Things products. There are many smart thermostats to choose from. You find four smart thermostats on the shelf in your price range with the features you want. You notice that three of them have a security and privacy label on the package, while the fourth one does not. You haven't seen security and privacy labels before, but think they might be quite useful. You take a closer look at the three thermostats with labels. One of the thermostats is voice activated and includes a microphone, but you notice on the label that the audio is shared. You also notice that the manufacturer provides security updates, but you will have to apply them manually. The other two thermostats also have microphones, but do not share the data. You get out your smartphone and scan the QR code to learn more about the privacy and security features of the second thermostat. You learn that the audio is used to provide device functions, which you are comfortable with, but it is also used to collect data for advertising, and it is stored in the cloud and identified form. You scan the QR code of the third box and are happy to see that audio data is only used for device functions, such as voice control, and audio data never leaves your home. Thanks to the security and privacy information on the label, you feel confident about your purchase decision. You decide to tell your friends and family about the label. One of your friends recalls your conversation and is now shopping online for a smart doorbell. They pick a top-rated doorbell and click on it. They see the security and privacy label and check it out. They are disappointed to see that this smart doorbell shares visual data from the camera and doesn't offer multi-factor authentication. They go back to the list of doorbells and pick the next one, which is also highly rated. This time they are pleased to see that the doorbell does not share data and it has a multi-factor authentication option. They click on the label to get more details. They are happy to see that audio and visual data is used only to provide device functions. This smart doorbell meets all their needs, so they put it in their shopping cart. Then they send you a text to thank you for telling them about the security and privacy label. At Carnegie Mellon Scilab, over the past five years, we've been doing research on how to help consumers find connected smart home products that are secure and disclose clearly how personal data is collected, shared, and used. We're conducting consumer studies to help us design comprehensive IoT security and privacy labels that will best inform consumers. Thank you. So that was a really great example of how details on consumer labels can help consumers make the right health or cybersecurity choices. So I'm pleased to be joined here by Jen Easterly, Director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, to describe CIS's work on consumer education. Awesome. Thank you so much, and It's such a pleasure to be here today uh, with so many terrific partners across industry, academia, and across the federal government. And I just want to say uh, thanks especially to you, to Jessica, to Lori for just the groundbreaking work here. You know, the U.S. cyber trust mark represents a critical advance toward a cyber ecosystem in which the technology that we rely upon every hour of every day is secure by design. And when we talk about secure by design, we're talking about ensuring that every technology company creates products that are developed with security as a top priority, not added on after the fact or bolted on by expensive add-ons. As we've introduced an integrated connected technology into nearly every facet of our lives, we've accepted as normal that technology products can be fundamentally vulnerable and that they're released to market with these vulnerabilities missing key security features. And we know that has to change. And today is a key part of catalyzing that very important change. To achieve this goal, we need to first define the characteristics of a secure product and then ensure that customers, whether they're enterprises or individuals, are well informed about those products. And the cyber trust mark is an incredibly important step in helping consumers identify and purchase products that are designed to protect them, their families, and their data. As many of you know, last April, the federal government released a Secure by Design white paper along with our international partners. And one of the key elements in the document was the need to embrace radical transparency 
And it's obviously particularly relevant to the cyber trust mark announcement. And one of the reasons that CISA that we are so enthusiastic about it and so grateful to the administration. This initiative will enable customers to understand more about security of devices that they're purchasing and ultimately gravitate to more secure products, just as nutrition labels help customers make healthier choices about food. Now, radical transparency can take many forms, such as the security labeling announced today. Uh, to a software provider publishing stats on adoption of multi-factor authentication, to the widespread implementation of secure uh, uh, bill of materials, software bill of materials, or SBOM, uh, even to a technology manufacturer uh, championing efforts to make necessary security logs widely available at standard prices. Uh, but all are important for a holistic understanding of our individual and collective cybersecurity posture. So we are super excited to see how this labeling effort will allow consumers to gravitate toward more secure products, allow retailers to sell products that customers can trust, and to move us all further down the path toward a secure by design culture for every type of technology. Thank you. Thank you. And on that note, we're very excited to have here Mr. Dolan of Best Buy to talk about the roles of retailers and Best Buy specifically in helping consumers know what information and make the right cybersecurity choices for them. Well, thank you. And at Best Buy, we're really excited to be here and be here in support of the U.S. Cyber Trust mark. When you think about Best Buy and you think about where we sit in the ecosystem related to consumer electronics, we're there from the very beginning to the very end, right? So when you first think about what products am I interested in, what products do I really want to procure, you've got over 90,000 blue shirts or Geek Squad agents that are there to help consumers identify and pick what they want to purchase. Then through the course of the life cycle, if you're a member of our Buy and Best Buy Total program, for example, we help you as the kind of the CISO or the CIO of your home, help you work with those products, help you make them more secure and integrate them more secure. And then when you think about at the end of the product, there's the return of the product, or perhaps you decided to upgrade it instead, and we want to resell that product. Throughout that whole chain, if a consumer understands how to be more secure, how to remove their information from the device, we could, it's a really a win-win-win. The consumer is more protected, the manufacturers are in a better position, the environment is in a better position as products are resold versus just recycled. So we are very excited to be here in support of this. We've been a partner with the FCC in the past as it relates to the transition from analog to, to digital televisions. We're one of the most recognized retailers as it relates to the Energy Star Guide, which many people have mentioned earlier today. So we're excited to lend our support and congratulate the administration. Greatly appreciate your being here. Thank you very much. So during the first Internet of Things Summit at the White House in October, Dr. Agarwal of Carnegie Mellon University gave a big part of the video you saw earlier and helped us concretize what a label could look like, what a fresh label could look like that stays updated based on ongoing security practices. So with that, we'd like to turn it over to Dr. Agarwal of Carnegie Mellon University. Uh yeah, good morning, and thank you for inviting us to this event. My name is Yuvraj Agarwal. I'm a faculty member at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, my collaborators at Carnegie Mellon, which includes Dr. Laurie Cranor and Pardes Imami Nayani, and I have been exploring how security and privacy factor into IoT device purchase behaviors. Over the past five years, our carefully designed studies have shown that consumers want this information available readily in the form of a consistent label. We found that consumers are willing to pay significant premium for products, with, with uh, better security and privacy features as opposed to devices that have bad security and privacy. Uh, we, uh, we have designed our labels through a multi-step process that involves extensive research with both consumers and experts. Our current design highlights the most actionable information for consumers covering both security and privacy factors. Notably, our design is free for anyone to use and adopt and is a consumer-tested solution that could immediately be implemented by the industry. We're working with various organizations, including the CTA, uh, Consumer Reports, and others, to help involve, uh, the, uh, in influence their IoT labeling efforts. We're excited to see the White House, under the leadership of the NSC and, the, and NIST, and under the stewardship of the FCC, release the US Cyber Trust mark uh, for IoT devices. This is a significant first step towards informing US consumers about the security and privacy of IoT products and harmonizing with other IoT labeling initiatives around the world. We're continuing our research in support of this effort. And earlier, we surveyed 500 consumers and showed them different versions of IoT labels, including a simple option with only a trust mark and a QR code, uh, as well as versions with more information. Our results show that while accessing information through a QR code can be helpful, 
Consumers prefer to have important security and privacy information readily available on the product package itself. Uh, we look forward to collaborating with the industry to, uh, and other groups to standardize the content of these labels. Uh, we're excited to share our findings in the demo showcase following these announcements and show a video of what we've done to create a customer journey. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'd now like to turn it over to Mr. Brookman of Consumer Reports. Hey, thank you very much. Um, good morning, I'm Justin Brookman. I'm Director of Technology Policy at Consumer Reports. Um, first, I just want to thank and congratulate the administration for their work in launching this incredibly important effort. Cybersecurity has become an issue of paramount importance for consumers in the modern economy, and it's only going to become more important as more of our per personal devices are embedded with internet connectivity. However, uh, today, many uh, consumer-connected devices are riddled with insecurity. Products costing hundreds of dollars are vulnerable right out of the box. Many never receive even one security update, let alone uh, the constant maintenance that is necessary for a secure product. Um, over the last 20 years, uh, federal and state policymakers have made important progress to mandate better cybersecurity practices. However, given scarce resources, it's practically difficult, if not impossible, to monitor the tens and thousands of, of, of devices out there. And because of a lack of enforcement, existing cybersecurity policy hasn't been enough. Consumer Reports believes that labels and trust marks can play an important role in educating consumers about cybersecurity and instilling trust in the, uh, in the marketplace. Um, we, uh, 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 we've long supported standardized labeling, uh, such as Energy Star and the USD organic label and broadband labels, uh, as a way to empower consumers uh, to make informed marketplace decisions. In support of this initiative, um, Consumer Reports is working on a reference implementation of the label with Carnegie Mellon. Uh, this is an end-to-end -end system through which manufacturers can voluntarily attest to the security and privacy attributes of their systems. Um, we then generate descriptive labels accessible through the QR code um, uh, with information about the security and privacy of the connected devices at the point of purchase and also through the lifespan of the product. Um, and I want to stress that last point, the lifespan of the device. As part of this labeling program, we need to ensure the devices are supported for the reasonable lifespan of the products. The mark should mean that consumers can trust this product is going to be supported for years to come and that the manufacturer has committed to developing and installing regular security and functionality updates. Um, a lot of the manufacturers in this room have actually done a really good job in making progress on that in recent years, but overall there's still work to be done. Um, so we're looking forward to working with the White House um, and the FCC and, and uh, industry and other stakeholders um, to making this program work for American consumers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that call to action. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Oxman of the Information Technology Industry Council. Thank you so much, and congratulations to you and your colleagues at the NSC for this incredible convening and the rapid pace from introduction of the idea to implementation uh, that we've seen on this important initiative. Uh, as the premier global advocate for the tech industry, uh, ITI is proud to support the launch of the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark. Uh, since 1916, indeed, ITI and our member companies have been partnering with government uh, in order to move programs like this uh, forward, uh, including at the FCC. And it's exciting to see the FCC uh, work so tirelessly on implementation here uh, because it is indeed the case uh, that without the FCC's work in the 1950s and 60s, uh, on the Carter phone and uh, computer inquiry proceedings, we would not have devices to connect to the internet. Um, so looking forward to partnering with the FCC, working with our friends at NIST uh, and, uh, and CISA uh, to move this forward. Uh, on behalf of our 80 member companies, uh, many of whom you've heard from today, uh, Amazon, Google, Keysight, uh, Qualcomm, Logitech, Samsung, uh, we are committed to uh, helping advance this important program because we recognize that the growth of smart connected devices is incredibly important, uh, but equally important uh, and uh, alongside the immense opportunities and benefits that they provide uh, is uh, the possibility of malicious actors uh, seeking to exploit them uh, and the need therefore for robust protections, which is what we are committed to. And indeed, here is our commitment. ITI has been working uh, as a cybersecurity policy leader uh, worldwide, uh, and we look forward to advancing uh, this program uh, in partnership with industry and government here, but also to advancing it around the world. Our efforts uh, across uh, Europe, the United Kingdom, uh, Japan and Singapore on IoT uh, labeling programs uh, will continue in partnership with this program. We're also very pleased that the U.S. Uh, Cyber Trust Mark mirrors many of the recommendations that ITI uh, has advanced 
advanced um, as part of our work. Uh, we have published uh, not one, two, but three uh, policy proposals, uh, a lot of which is incorporated in here. Uh, the message uh, of the tech industry uh, today with this program is that cybersecurity is a shared responsibility. That's why industry and government work uh, in partnership and why consumer awareness uh, is so important. Making sure that consumers understand what the label means uh, is, I think, the most important step for industry uh, to work on collaboratively with government. Because it is imperative, especially in a voluntary scheme, uh, to make sure that consumers have their own responsibilities in mind. And that is to take the basic cyber measures that are necessary in addition to informing themselves uh, using strong and unique passwords, applying security updates and the like. And to help make this guidance and labels consistent for consumers in the US around the world, we encourage the administration to continue to identify key elements of existing labeling programs that bolster the US cyber trust mark. ITI and our member companies look forward to continuing to work with the administration and other stakeholders to ensure that industry and policymakers can ensure a safe and resilient IoT ecosystem for all consumers. So again, congratulations, and we look forward to working together on this important initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll now turn it over to Dr. Elazari of Open Policy. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very honored and humbled to join you today in this historical uh, moment. Um, I had the pleasure of joining you in the summit, formerly as the head of cybersecurity policy at Intel and the chair of the ITI Cybersecurity Committee. But today, I'm especially humbled to represent the voice of entrepreneurs and open policy, a very young startup founded here in the United States just two months ago. And we are aiming to represent the voice of entrepreneurial companies, startups, and the investors that are investing in them. My name is Dr. Amit Lazari. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Open Policy. This is the world's first tech-enabled company to support policy, an intelligence and engagements platform. We aim to connect entities of all sizes with policymakers and governments globally. I'm also the co-editor of international standard ISO IEC 2742, still in progress, the first international standard at ISO aiming to help harmonize and align security baseline controls for IoT devices globally. We at Open Policy believe that access to policy can be scaled by technology and access to markets can be scaled by policy. We are very supportive of this initiative. Specifically, we are encouraged by the administration's strong commitment towards enhancing security measures in products and IoT and increasing the measurability and ability of users to get transparent information about the controls that are baked into these connected devices. This will help user awareness and accountability. Open Policy is committed to support this initiative. We are doing so by taking a number of actions. First of all, Open Policy will convene a group of leading product security entrepreneurial companies to continue to engage with the administration and governments around the world on product security. In addition, I will continue my work at ISO IEC and of course support the important and critical work on standards and consensus driven processes to continue and evolve the controls and the technologies that we need to support IoT security as the threat landscape evolves. I'm representing also today a group of leading companies that include Armis, Clarity, Cybeats, Exonius, ThriveDX, Mine, Cybelium, and BridgeQuest. These companies have made specific commitments in support of this important initiative. And they are committing, among others, training information to scale the ability of the workforce and users to better understand IoT security and threats, actionable threat information, and most importantly, technologies. They're excited to work with the administration to provide their feedback as innovative leaders in this space and the broader OT and IoT security ecosystem to create technology solutions that can be used by manufacturers and users globally to better measure better, better the controls and get visibility on the IoT devices that are being deployed to make sure that the label is in fact coherent and in compliant. We are very excited to represent them today and humbled to be here. Thank you for your support. Thank you very much. So today is just the beginning. 
And I want to highlight some additional work that will be undertaken as next steps. First, by the Department of Energy, including its national labs, to develop security requirements for smart meters and inverters, both essential components of the clean smart grid of the future and both key to protecting the nation from a cybersecurity perspective. We know smart meters, both power homes and potentially could be used to disrupt one home or many homes. So a cybersecurity standard that is deployed for smart meters is absolutely critical to the cybersecurity of the nation. Finally, secondly, NIST will be undertaking an effort to define a specific standard for routers, complex devices, which are often hacked by malicious attackers and used to conduct next stage and more sophisticated cyber attacks. So we're grateful to NIST for this next level of cybersecurity standard. And finally, to the Department of State, who will work, as a number of speakers have noted, to ensure mutual recognition of standards, because our aim is that secure products can be sold globally to consumers around the world. As I mentioned earlier, President Biden is keenly focused on helping Americans be safer online. And today's launch is the result of hard work by a number of agencies. It all boils down, though, to people, people's persistence, people's dedication, as we heard earlier. So I'd like to take a moment and thank a number of key individuals. First, of course, to Chairwoman Rosenworcel and your team for the work happening at the FCC, specifically Priscilla Argueris, Deb Jordan, and Paloma Perez. Second, of course, Director Lacazio and the work that's happening at NIST, specifically that of Kat Migas. Finally, to Mike Bergman from CTA, Steve Hanna from CSA for long-term efforts to advance the cause of cybersecurity, to Steve Kelly from the National Security Council, and to the individuals who made today's effort happen, Michael Tam and Samantha Raposa and the White House tech team. The U.S. Cyber Trust Mark, at its core, is a connector, connecting consumers who want to buy more secure products to know that they're more cyber secure in their homes, in their schools, and in their offices. And retailers who commit, and manufacturers and retailers who commit to building more secure and connected devices. To see many of the initial devices that will be bearing the mark underneath this program, we invite you to visit the showcase. Like so many of you, I look forward to seeing devices big and small with this mark. We started today's discussion with Chairwoman Rosenworcel talking about even a simple candy machine representing a threat to an organization because so many Internet of Things devices don't ship secure. To your point earlier, they're vulnerable out of the box. And we're all looking to a future, as one speaker noted earlier, where IoT is synonymous with trust, not only on the day it's purchased, but for the life of that product. So with the partnership of the organizations here today, and as we work to educate consumers to the future, we will all work together to drive to that future. A thank you to the, all the stakeholders who participated today, and we look forward to working together towards that future. All the best.